For the man is not of the woman. For the man is not from the woman. All of that stuff, the head covering is going into all of that now. Setting the most high God's people back in order. So it's not no basic thing that's going on. And, and that's why it bothers us and pisses us off when we see it. You got a black man that'll walk into a courtroom, take his hat off, and honor this man right here. Right. Bro. But then you got a black man standing in front of other black men telling you, brother, you a god. You're supposed to take back your people, take back your national. He don't want to take his hat off for of a regular man right here. Because he still worships and honors that white man, the so-called white man that put him in slaves and shackles and calls him nigga to this day. That's right. Uh, in Baltimore, y'all have a hell of a group there I used to listen to all the time. But on that, what you're saying is like the females, are they not supposed to cover their hair? Yes, because, hold on, hold on, let me finish. Yeah. So that way, because I know where you're getting ready to go, right. but I'm going to say yeah. that. Well, um, when you're praying, you know, men are not supposed to, uh, what do you call it, lust. So if you see a woman with her hair or whatever, like an Islamic uh, thing, then it's sort of like a sin. Now, I'm not bringing up religions, religion, nothing like that, but I'm a Muslim, but I believe 100% in everything that y'all say, believe it or not. So we're not gonna fight religion-wise, but why don't women are able to cover their hair? Because it's a sin if a man is lusting after a woman while you're talking about God. Are you saying that the man will lust after seeing their hair, or? Well, yes. Because uh, hair is part of their beauty. Hair is and some beauty, men, right? not all men, but some men. Let me ask you a question. Yes. When we go to a, a courtroom or a prestigious restaurant. But we're not worshiping God. Let me, uh, let me ask you a question. And they ask you to remove your hat. Do you do it? Yeah. When you go to court and they tell you, hey, remove your head covering, why do you do that? Out of respect for the judge. Out of respect for the for the, judge. For the judge. Out of respect for the judge. But that's right? not God. Now, what what nationality is that judge though? Is he does he look like you? Not all the time. And and you're following. And even if the judge looked like you, the nation that set that law in place. What nation of people set that law in place that you pay homage to by removing your hat when you step into the courtroom or get arrested or get put out the courtroom? That's what nation totally of people different. are you paying respect to? That's something totally different. How That's is not it? what I'm saying. That's what nation of people are you paying respect to? Well, it doesn't matter what nation we say. It does God. matter. Yeah, so, I'm going to show you why it matters. Read 1 Corinthians 11 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. And the thing is, you, you did mention that there's only one God, right? Y'all believe that, right? God. But what God are you worshiping? You're not worshiping the God of the Bible if you do and you oh, fear the here. same one that tells you to take your hat off in the courtroom and you do it without a problem. Yes, boss. Yes, sir. I'm gonna take that off because I fear that white man. Bro, that's white man. But the God of the Bible, exactly. So now this is how you serve God, don't read that. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. It says the head of every man. Every black man, we're gonna get to the woman too, but brother, you a man. You need to worry about yourself and what you need to do in order to in order to lead your women, in order to lead your nation. So forget about the laws for women right now. We're dealing with we're gonna show you the woman though. But you need to worry about and you need to worry about how to become a man and follow God as a man of the Lord. Right. Because he's dealing with you. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the what? Is the man. So you're the head of the woman. So basically, once you get the Most High God's laws down pat, that woman is supposed to follow you. She's supposed to follow you. And it's a heavy question that you had in regards to why the women got to cover their head in Islam, right? Because of their uncovering, you're talking about lust and things of that nature. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. So that right there is giving you a divine order now. You got the Most High God. There's only one of them. There's only one God. And you have Christ. Then you have man, you have the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man. You, he's the only one, God only deals with you so-called black man. He only deals with the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. What's your nationality, bro? Black. You're black, right? He only deals with so, the black man. So how does he deal with the Mexicans then? We'll finish it. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, we'll finish it. <laughs> hey, that's a great question because a lot of our brothers. They're not black at all. A lot of our brothers have that problem, Read. <laughs> Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, 
dishonoring his head. So he's telling you that you're dishonoring your head when you have, and when the Bible is coming out, you're praying or prophesying, and you have your head covered, you're dishonoring your head. You're dishonoring who you're supposed to report to, who you're supposed to fear. You gonna say the same, the same honor that you give the so-called white man in his courtroom or in any venue that he tells you no hats allowed, you take that damn hat off because you fear whatever's gonna come from that white man by not doing it and you wanna be around him the most. You understand that? Yeah. But he says, every man praying or prophesying with his head covered, read that again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. You're in complete dishonor of your head. And I get it. We all get it. We understand that the reason why our men dishonor the, the, the words in this book here, what do you think the reason is? Why do you think our men don't even want to deal with the Bible at all? The black man. I'm going to ask you first. Why? You don't know? Oh, you do know. Why do you think? Because they, they don't want to follow the rules. They don't want to follow the rules. Guess what? They don't want to follow this. Singing, and in the different. back of their mind, in the back of their minds, they're thinking this Bible here yeah. is associated with this image right here. Right. You understand that? That's witchcraft, sorcery. It is white supremacy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the thing: it's not the truth. That is not the God that is saying this thing is. Stay right there. Read that again. Because we're gonna go to the women. That Every go man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So you know that you're in, you're in direct dishonor of Christ right now, right? But not this Christ here. Forget and damn him. You're in dishonor the Christ that looks just like you, that came to redeem you, that wants to save your soul. Yo. And that is going to come back and either kill you or redeem you and put you over these other nations. You understand that, right? Read. But every woman. Now it's going into the woman now. There's a reason why the women cover their head. In Islam, I'm not sure of that. Well, but know, I'm sure. well they do it in all religions. They but, do it in well, Christian do it? Answer, too. What? No, no, the no, old no. ladies, yes, they do. The they cover their hair. Hat, but there's, but they're covering their hair. That don't go to church with a hat on. I'm going to ask the sister right now. I'm going to ask the sister right now. Hey, sis, okay. you go to church? You go to church, sis? I used to. You used to. When you went to church, did they order you to put a hat on your head? Did you have to have a hat on your head? There were some religious people that did. In your church? In, the, in particular churches. Were you forced to put a hat on your head? Some of those churches that you went to. I'm asking about your Some church. of the churches that I went to had stipulations, yes. And that's all I'm saying. Some do, some don't. Some of them did. They had stipulations and rules that they went by. That's I just got, like the Catholics. Read, though, read. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonored right. her head. Now, the reason why they had their head covered when prayer and prophecy is coming out because they dishonored in order to honor their head. Who is that woman's head? Why did they do that? That's why I'm listening. Because so, the woman has back, been. Look, look. Go back to the top now. Go back to, read that again, then go back to the top. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonored her head. So the man has to have his head uncovered in, in, um, to, to pay respect to who? His God. head, which is Christ, right? Yeah. The woman has to cover her head in respect to her, her, the person that's over her. Who's over the woman? Man. The men, right? Yeah, that's yeah. So, so now read that from the top again. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Jump down to the woman praying and prophesying. Verse 5. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. So as a black man. You shouldn't want the Bible to come out and have a woman walking around here with her head uncovered. Exactly. Because that shows complete disrespect to you as a man. True. And that's the problem with our community and society now. Right. Because our women have no respect for the men, and our men don't command, demand, or want any respect from our women. All our men want to do with our women is what? You know what it is. Have sex yeah. with them, sleep with them, do whatever they want with them, and yeah. guess what? The woman gets pregnant, and what does that man do? Run. The man go running, he doesn't take care of the kids. So this, this, the head covering is a serious matter. Because read on, keep reading. For that even also one, as she were shaven, uh -huh. for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Let her also be shorn. Read. That means cut. Or if, if you came here without your head covering, you might as well. If you don't want to cover your head, lady, forget the weave that you have in your hair or the nice perm style that you have. 
you want to shave all your damn head bald now. <coughs> you understand? Yeah. Read. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, mm -hmm. let her be covered. Right. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. It says a man ought not to cover your head. Don't cover your head, read. But they do it anyway. For as much <laughs> as he is the image and the glory of God. Because you black man, you're the image and the glory of God. The most high God, that's why we mentioned this image right here. God looks just like you. You understand that? So the head covering goes way beyond that. It goes, be, it goes to the God that you worship. You understand that? Read. True. But the woman is the glory of the man. That woman there, that black woman, is the glory of the man. And how are our women glorifying our men today? Twerking? Dressing modestly up and down the street? Calling you a man? Of, yeah. I don't need no man. I don't want to listen to no man. We, we're equal. Marriage is 50 50. No. F nigga free? No. <coughs> That's how she honor you. Yeah. But then we got a problem as men taking our damn do-rag a hat off and honor the most high God is trying to put you in a position that, that the Bible talks about. Right, yo. All that is heavy, read. For the man is not of the woman. But the man is not from the woman. All of that stuff, the head covering is going into all of that now. Setting the most high God's people back in order. So it's not no basic thing that's going on, and, and that's why it bothers us and pisses us off when we see it. You got a black man that'll walk into a courtroom, take his hat off, and honor this man right here. Right. Yo. But then you got a black man standing in front of other black men telling you, brother, you a god. You're supposed to take back your people, take back your national. He don't want to take his hat off for, for regular men right here. Because he's still worse than honest that white man, the so-called white man that put him in slaves and shackles and calls him nigga to this day. That's right. That's right. Read. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Men don't come from you, sister. Men don't have a damn thing to do with a woman. Creation had nothing to do with a woman. When a man came, he came from the dust of the ground. And guess what? Guess when a woman came? She came after that through you. From you. That's what woman means. From man. Right. Read. Neither was the man created. For the woman. All that head covering goes into that. Lady, I'm not created for you. Happy wife, happy life. That's bull. That is white man Jesus right there. That's not the God of this Bible. Happy wife, happy life means a simp husband and a damn manly wife. That's not nature. That's not even how things run. Physically, a woman should not be dominating a damn man. That's just on a very carnal, the lowest of the levels. How are you going to take orders from someone that you can pick up and toss out the window? Does that make sense? Would your child tell you, hey, daddy, go wash the dishes for me or I'm going to beat you? No. And that's a basic level. Now, I'm not saying we're not, we don't condone beating women and things like that. I'm just saying it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. Three. But the woman for the man. Go ahead. Go ahead. For this cause of the woman to have power on her head. That power on her head is to be in complete submission unto the man. So head covering is very serious. Right. A brother's act like, oh, it's just a hat. I, wanna, I don't want to mess my damn hair up. Brother, you a simple brother. Because you disrespecting your, the order that the most High is trying to put you back in. Right. So it, it, it really, to be honest, that law was not created for lust at all. What the law that was created for lust was the law that the brother was bringing out in regards to pants, modest apparel, how women dress, how they act. You understand? And get that in Matthew real quick about the lust. Because we're going to bring out what you was talking about now. Yeah. A woman. What you got, sis? Okay, the last time I went to church and, and, and went for serious business, I was dressed fully covered mm -hmm. as I was like a soldier in, in the army of the Lord. Okay. And, how, and how, was I, how was I covered? I had on complete covering from head all the way down to to the ground. How you doing over there, bro? Right. I had I had on a, a whole uniform covered from my head all the way down with a long dress, mm -hmm. and then I had a red I had a white gown on, and then I had a red sash. So so and that so, honored that honored God. Right, but why wouldn't you want to honor God every day? Because I see you not dressed like that now. Well. That's true. I'm not like that now because I'm just homeless and I'm on the street Understood. and I don't have all and the clothes. I don't have all the clothes and stuff. I, I have some long dresses, but so, I don't have a lot. So you hear that, bro? Well, I, I don't heard, have I that heard. much money. But you know what I mean? It doesn't change the fact 
that, you know what I mean, I hear what you're saying and I agree with it. Okay. But then, you know, if a person believes that they might be in a praying setting and maybe taking a man, uh, uh, what do you call it? Well, see, there you go. Let's not do that. I'm not doing that to y'all. Do I'm not doing that to y'all. What, I, what I'm saying is if you're in a praying setting, uh -huh. just like right now, we're in a spiritual setting, right? right? Now, let's say if this person is really into you and they're garbed up or whatever, they wouldn't want to take their attention away from you and put it on somebody else. You see what I'm trying to say? It's like if I'm sitting here, okay, and I'm paying attention to you, I'm trying to learn something, mm -hmm. but this lady comes up, she got some makeup on, she's dressed up, and she's catching my attention. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, anything else, I agree with. But I believe that if okay. the person is taking your attention away from a person that's trying to give you something, mm -hmm. yeah, then it should that be. Is? That's all I'm saying. But what do you think that is, though? Get that. Well, I just told you what I was. What that I was. person, now, now, me and you paying attention, right? Y'all locked in, right? Now, if somebody, now, somebody come comes up, through and become a distraction, and that's the reason people. why they do it. Well, 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 who's doing that to you? Huh? Who's doing it? Well, basically, my mind, because I'm... Let me, show you, let me show you what the Bible says. Read that. Okay. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower is sowing the word. So the word is being sown now through Christ. We're just vessels by Christ to bring out his words. You understand that? This is not us up here. It's our words are not coming out to you. You understand that? The sower is sowing the word. So the word of God is being sown now. That's a spiritual setting. Read. And these are they by the wayside. And these are the people now. There's four types of Israelites. There's four types of people that's going to stop by and hear this word now. There's four types. We see plenty of people come up. They stand up. Some leave. Some leave when they hear certain things, right? There's four types of people, though, read. Where the word is sown. Now the word is being sown into. That we explain the head cover we're dealing, read. But when they have heard. But when you hear the word, watch what happens. Satan coming immediately. Who comes? Satan, Satan coming immediately. It's a spiritual fight, bro. Yeah, exactly. So, so when yeah, there's well, been plenty way. of people, right, yeah. there's been plenty both of people way. that come up here. And what happens when, when we try to they ask a question? We try to deal with what happens? That damn cell phone rings. Yeah, I got to go, I got to go. They walk off. Was that the person calling them or was that Satan? That was Satan. Trying to do what? I hear distraction. what you're saying, but it's a distraction. Exactly, both ways. but that's the fight that you're going to watch this. Was and taking away the word that was sown in their heart. Right, because they go now and they start handling other business. They take away a word, the word away. Read. And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stone, stony ground. That's the same situation. Same situation. Satan come by, distract them or whatever. But there's another set. That's not going to get that distracted though. Read. Who, when they have heard the word. Who, when they've heard the word now, read. Immediately receive it with gladness. They immediately receive it with gladness. That's how a lot of us was. We heard, oh my God, we Israelites? Damn, man, hey man, how do I find out about this? Then you start getting angry and all type of stuff about all these different things. Then the Bible, on a basic level, starts to make sense to you. Like, damn, this is why we went into slavery. Now, we can't be black. My last name is not Williams, Johnson, Thompson, White, um, whatever you want to call it. Because the slave masters gave that to me. Who are we? So you, so now you're hearing this thing like a, a clean glass of water, that's what the bishops say, right? Now you're like, damn man, I need to hear this thing. You receive it with gladness, read. And they have no roots in themselves. But now they, they hear this word now and they're not trying to study at all. So they grab a flyer, they stand in front of the men of the Lord, they hear the word, they're happy. Right, these guys told me I was an Israelite, but they're not rooted in Christ. They're not studying. They're not trying to apply any of the laws. They just like, oh, okay, I'm an Israelite, and what? I'm gonna go back to not to cover my head when the Bible coming out, to wear it pants, forget everything. Read. And so endure, but for a time. Uh -huh. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, right. immediately, immediately they are offended. Immediately they are offended and now they leave. It's a lot of different levels of Israelites. So the distraction that you're talking about though, that distraction comes, that's basically Satan trying to take the word away from you. Right. Trying to stop you from hearing the word and applying that thing. Mm -hmm. So yes, that sister's going to walk by. Look, look, come on, the position that we're in. We're trying to uphold the Most High's word. And we got to walk around our people that are dealing with things that we had to overcome and still fighting to overcome. You understand? We were the ones out there either selling dope or smoking weed and we got to walk past and brothers just blowing up blunts all over the place. We were the hallmongers and we got to see our sisters dressed modestly. 
right? There's a level of discipline that you have to have and instill in yourself, though, to start applying to it that's no longer a distraction because you know that that's the damn devil. Right. You know it's the devil. You got to understand the war that you're in. It's a war. And Satan is always going to come to pull this word out of your spirit. It'll stop you from hearing the word. Read. And these are they which are sown among thorns, uh -huh. such as hear the word and the cares of this world. That's another thing. The cares of this world here has stopped a lot of people from wanting to follow the most high. Read. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of money. Riches. Get rich or die trying. You understand? Oh, I'm homeless, man. But a brother come through and tell you right now, hey, man, deliver this package over there across the street to that church right there. I'm going to give you $500. Would you do it? No. Just bring the package over there, right? No, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't, right? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do it. But there's plenty of people that would. That will, yeah. Right? Yeah. Why would they do that, though? Because they don't know any better. They, they, they used to that no, type of life. No, because they want that they, money. They want that money. Because they homeless, they hungry, and they want to get that. They need that $500. That's what to what hungry. Right. Anybody hungry? Well, and the lust of other things uh -huh. entering in. So the word. And the lust of other things entering in. Now, it could be that big booty sister that walked by with her hair looking nice, with a nice frame. You know you're not supposed to be dealing with her, sleeping with her, or whatever. But now you, you heard the word. It didn't distract you to the point where now you're not keeping it. But now you try to walk the walk. And that sister's going to come right back to you now on a higher level. That's Satan. You understand that? The cares and the lust of other things does what? So the word. Now you start looking for other doctrines. Well, well, this guy says that I can have multiple wives and sleep with other women, but these guys here are too strict. So now you start choking the word of God. What does the Bible say? Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. You're looking for a doctrine to get out of the discipline that it takes for you to do what God tells you to do. Really? And it becometh unfruitful. And now you're not bringing forth the fruits. What are the fruits? Peace, love, joy. Right, the fruits of the spirit. We don't have to, we're not gonna go through that. The fruits of the spirit is the nice. application of God's laws. Right. Read. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Now, this is the ground you want to be on. So I get it. We're worried and concerned about all the different distractions and temptations and all the different things that may take us away from the word. All the different inhibitions that we may have from stopping smoking. Or or stop eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. Or 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 stop sleeping with every brother walking around or dressing, wearing a dress or doing whatever you do. All the different inhibitions now that stop us from doing those things. Read. Such as hear the word uh -huh. and receive it and bring forth fruit. Now you start to be like, damn, I need to start doing this. I'm, now I'm going to bring forth fruit now. The fruits of the spirit. You're doing that thing now. You understand that? Read. Psalm 34, Psalm 60, and Psalm 100. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Is a kettle brought to be put under a bushel? Right, so your job is to bring forth fruit. So every, there's a whole bunch of people that hear this word here. We get people that curse at us. We get people that call us liars. We get people that want to fight us. We get people that don't want to hear the word. We get demons come through and try to take every single one of y'all away from hearing this word now. Get out. We got people that don't even want to hear it. Get a damn flyer. What? They're in earshot of this word, telling the so-called black men and black women that you're the greatest people on earth. And the thing we got to hear is, what about the white man? And the white man has, what kind of nonsense is that? Is the white man saying, what about the black man when he builds another prison to put your black ass in? Get out. Get out. Is the white man thinking about the black man when he brings drugs and guns in our communities for our little black boys to use? Does the white man think about the black man when nothing but black people riding that bus right there? Right. And they ride around in their BMWs. I like the black man's wish. Right. Okay. They riding around in those things. Okay. What you got to say to defend the white man now? What I got to say about the white man? Yeah, what you got to say? I'm not a 
prejudice. I, 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 was, I was never raised in hating no one. You know, no. But I can tell you one thing. Yeah. I did I did have one white man put his hand on me and he did a great thing for me. What he did? He he, he that, had, he's um, a deliverance minister. He and he, he set that, me um, free. The Holy Spirit through him set me did free. Did he teach you who you were as a person? He te he, he got What's your demons. nationality? He got the whole he got those demons out of me. What's your nationality? My nationality, I'm, I'm black. You're black? American. That's what he taught you? No, no, he didn't tell me that. It uh -huh. wasn't about that. It was about, uh, it was a deliverance ministry that I went to a deliverance service. Uh -huh. And that's the best thing of my life is someone coming to my rescue when I couldn't even save my own self. He delivered you? He oh, Let me ask you a question, sis. The Holy Spirit. You bought that soda today? Yeah, I know I'm not supposed to drink it, but this well, is... Well, hold on. You're not supposed to drink it? No, it's not about drinking. It's, it's, it's dehydration. No. Today is the most like God's Sabbath day. Did he teach you that? Yeah. Not to break God's Sabbath. It wasn't about did he, that. Did he teach you not to wear pants? No, no, it wasn't about that. Did he that. teach you who you were as a person? No. You understand that? You understand that, sis? You understand that, bro? The thing is, look, the other nations are going to come through. They may even feed you every day for a year. They give our people, they give our sisters welfare checks. All the gifts that come from them people, give me a gift to destroy the heart. All the gifts that comes from dealing with the other nations is to keep you away from who you are and to keep them where they need to be at. The you understand that? The, the Most High God has our people in affliction today for a purpose. There's a reason. Hold, hold that, it, Hosea 5 and 15. There's a yeah. reason why our people are strung out on drugs. And you have the messenger of Satan coming in and trying to beguile you with a gift. And tell you, look, sis, you're going to be all right. We're going to help you. But they don't teach you who you are. That's like, that's like giving a man a fish instead of teaching him how to fish. He give you a fish, you're always going to be dependent on him and come back to him for more fish. Right. But he's not going to teach you how to fish so that you no longer need him. You no longer want him. Guess what? He'll remain your master if you keep taking that gift. Read. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Oh. I will go. And return to my place. For the most high God said, I'm going to go and return to my place now. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. You must acknowledge your offense, black man, black woman, Hispanic and Native American man and woman. You must acknowledge your offense that you've been walking ungodly and that you hate God right now. I don't hate God. You sure? No, I don't hate God. That you you don't know God, sis. No, no, That's I the know problem. Him. I know him and I Read. am saved by him. And seek my face. Now you got to start seeking God's face. Where's God's face at, sis? Where do we seek God from? Where's the primary resource? In the, the word. Bible. In the word. In the word. Yeah. Read. In their affliction. In their homelessness. In their poverty. In their imprisonment. In their drug addiction. In their broken marriage. In their single marriage. In their, their being orphans in our community. In their affliction, they're going to do what? They will seek me early. There's a divine purpose in being afflicted by the Most High God. And that so-called pastor that went to you that was of another nation, the same nation that did this to your people. The same nation that brought us on a slave ship. The same nation that actually set up the system to where we're living like this today. No, relax, relax for a second. Living like this today, the same nation came to you and said, hey, I'm going to free you now. Right. Free from what? Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit working through I'm going to show you what the Holy Spirit the Holy is. Spirit was working through no, it wasn't. Because the Holy Spirit would teach you something. The Holy Spirit would let you know that you're a child of the Most High God. Let me show you what he did do for you. Get that girl, Ecclesiastes. I'm going to show you this. Read. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Go ahead. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Oppression should make anyone with any type of wisdom mad. Oppression should make you be like, hey, I hate this stuff. I hate how this country is set up. I hate how my people are living. I hate the fact that I, I don't I don't have a pot to piss in, but I see people sitting there living, living up, living it up of another nation. I hate that thing. I hate the fact that I call myself Ronald Williams, and that's not even my name. I don't even know what my ancestors was before slavery. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know that thing. Read. And they give. And what? And they give a sandwich, and they give a, a, a Section 8 check, a welfare check, uh, food stamps, all those, a job, and put you in a little apartment in a project so you think you done made it? Read. Destroy it, the heart. Now it's destroyed to the point where you defend that same person that did these things to your people. You don't even recognize that. 
You don't even care. It destroys your heart to the point where you don't even feel oppressed anymore. You don't even feel oppressed. Yeah. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet filled for our vain help. Our eyes are continuously failing now for our vain, useless, pointless help. Get out and vote. They probably, when voting season come back around, they're going to have flyers on a bus station. Somebody's going to have a booth right here telling our people to vote or die. Vote. Vote for a country that never changed. You had a black man in office and the only thing that he did was kill some people overseas and make you more of a homosexual. But black people are happy. They ain't talking about they're not partial. But you voted for Barack Obama because he was black and black only. Right. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.